All right, good morning, people of YouTube. So this time we're back with another deck profile for BT14. This time we are back with Blue Hybrid. So when Tommy got unlimited from the ban list, uh, it sent a cold sweat down the spines of players that have been in this game for quite some time. And it's, uh, Tommy's been a menace. Uh, he dominated multiple formats. And now that we have him back, there are answers to him in this game. However, he is still a very powerful card and facilitates a lot of degenerate gameplay. So if you like to play a deck that just tells your opponent, no, you can't do that, uh, this is the deck for you. So if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and start with the Digitama. We got four copies of the new Bukamon from BT14. This card gives us jamming if your opponent doesn't have a Digimon with more sources than us. Uh, this includes if they have no Digimon in play, which means that cards like your Gomamon and your Floodgates can actually live security checks. And then that's really, really nice because you can actually apply pressure with Floodgates and still keep them as Floodgates. So really like this card. So we're going to go ahead and start with the Tamers because it is a hybrid deck. We evolve off of Tamers quite often. We got four copies of this little bastard. Uh, Tommy is incredibly oppressive, mostly for the inheritable effect to stun something that doesn't have sources. But whenever your opponent's swinging at security and this card kind of comes out and just trashes three of their sources, sometimes that can really mess them up. And this is just an overall phenomenal card. The three cost is fantastic. Tommy is a little menace. We have four copies of Sora and Joe. I think it's kind of wrong to play any less than three copies of this card. I prefer four because you want to see this card as early as possible. Uh, because this card just gives you free men memory for having a, your opponent's card stunned down. Uh, which you do very often. And then once they get no sources, they can just kind of sit there forever. And uh, Sora Joe just keeps giving you memory turn after turn. And this card is absolutely fantastic. So I'm playing two Davis as a memory setter. Uh, can grab you a piece whenever you slap him down. This card is still pretty good. And then I play two copies of the new Joe from BT14. So upon testing, this card is really good, and I'm considering bumping it up. Um, on play, it trashes any source from any one of your opponent's Digimon, which is pretty cool. Specific source removal is nice. But when a source is stripped during your turn, you can tap this tamer and gain a memory. Uh, so basically, anytime you sneeze with this deck, this card can trigger that effect, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. It makes your plays even cheaper. And with this card, with the Sora Joe giving you a bunch of memory at the start of your turn, um, this deck can just have upwards of eight or nine memory to work with in certain situations, and that's kind of busted. So for the rookies... We got four copies of the new Gomamon. I really, really like this card, mostly for the inheritable effect, because uh, you can kind of shove this card under Lanamon to give it jamming, and then they, you can kind of bait them into a Zudomon Ace play, and then if they blow up the Lanamon, then the Goma comes back, um, and then you can continue to apply pressure with the Goma, because the Goma's just going to strip sources at the start of your main phase whenever it rolls back around to your turn. This is a phenomenal card to, uh, to have in the breeding area, and it's really the only rookie that you want to be evolving on. So, for the rest of the rookies, we are playing four copies of Sayakomon, training booster in the meta, and this card stops them, so you can, again, tell your opponent no. We play two copies of Madoki Betamon. This card really hurts decks like Fenrir Luga, Bloom Lord, um, anything that still plays training boost. Uh, Madoki Beta is fantastic, and again, Having a bunch of floodgates to tell your opponent no is really on brand for this deck. I am playing one more rookie. It is the BT4 Strabimon. This card can reveal three, fetch us a tamer and a hybrid. Um, that's pretty nice. It can help us dig for pieces. It can potentially add two cards. There's nothing really to hate about this card. It's just, uh, it's not a floodgate. So it's kind of hard to justify playing any more than this, really. So that is it for the rookies. For the level fours, we got a lot of hybrids. We got four copies of Kori Kakumon. Uh, this card plus Tommy is a stun two, which is really stupid. Uh, this card over a hybrid lets you stun something. This card is just stun man. Uh, he comes down, stuns everything, and then your opponent's like, really sad, man. So this is a good time. I really like Kori Kakumon, and it's a necessary four of for the deck. 
We got three copies of Kumamon. It's the hybrid that when you evolve into it, it strips a source. That's really on brand. I feel like three of it is fine because we do want to make room for three copies of Lanamon. So if you feel like Kumamon is more important, you can cut a Lanamon to increase that number to four. I really like Lanamon in this list, especially now that we have Gomamon in the game. Because again, this card plus Gomamon is a really nice combo. Giving your hybrid jamming ensures that you can go into a Zudomon ace play for free on the next turn. Um, or whenever your opponent attacks. And I really like the value that this card adds to the deck. So for the rest of the level 4s, I am playing two level 4s that aren't hybrids as kind of flex slots for my own personal taste. I am playing one copy of the Ikakumon. This card, whenever you digivolve into it, it strips any two sources. And uh, until and when you attack with it, until the end of the, your opponent's turn, one of your p opponent's Digimon with fewer Digivolution cards than this card cannot attack. So it's very similar to the Kori Kakumon, and then it has the same thing as its Inheritable effect. So if you evolve this into the Zudomon Ace, you can still continue to stun things. Um, this card just provides you more avenues to stun things, which is the name of the deck. Just keep your opponent stunned. Don't let them play the game. Uh, this card facilitates that strategy very heavily. And uh, again, you do want some cards to evolve on top of your Gomamon, so this is one of them. The other one I'm playing is the BT1 Secret Rare Vidramon. So, I really like this card. Um, for any of, any of you that have been fans of the channel for a very long time, you might know. Um, this card has been a really, really fun tech that I've included in a lot of decks. And with the new Bukamon from BT14, you can actually give this card double attack and jamming. Um, if they kill it, then you have the Gomamon under it and the Gomamon plays. And then if they want to swing into it, you can go into Zudomon Ace and really surprise them that way. Not only that, but it does have a sick inheritable effect that says all turns. If you have a Tamer, this Digimon gets plus 1,000. Um, so that buffs your Zudo Ace, it buffs your level 6s. This card is really fantastic, and I highly recommend that you guys try it in your list. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be at a very high number, but I do think that you guys will really like this card if you give it a shot. So for the level 5s, I got three copies of Beowulf Mon. This card helps us bounce a lot of things, but the main reason this is here is because it you can evolve this over a hybrid for one, swing, and then take that hybrid that you evolved over and put it back into your hand. So this card allows you to loop your Kori Kakumon, and that means that your opponent just never gets to have have fun. Um, and uh, this card is a very, very good card. You know, being able to return your sources is already fantastic. This card could have jamming off the Lana. Um, you could even evolve up over Buka and give it jamming. Like, this card is truly phenomenal. I just don't think you need four of it anymore because we have access to Zudomon Ace now. So I'm playing three copies of this card. It's got a really cool mechanic that lets you blast evolve whenever your opponent swings. Um, if you've been playing since the, since the new starter decks, you'll know what that does. But whenever you evolve into this, you trash any two sources, and then you bounce something to their hand that has... What is it? No sources? Yeah, it's no sources, which is really fantastic considering you just combine this with cards like the Kumamon, you combine this with cards like the Gomamon, the Joe, the Sora Joe. Um, you just get them to no sources very, very quickly. And even if you have to just hard slam this for four, that's tremendous value. Sure, it has the overflow mechanic attached to it, but I really do like this card for the amount of control and aggression that it puts on in pretty much every matchup. And this card actually gives Blue Hybrid a way to deal with bodies rather than just stun them if something becomes too oppressive. Speaking of dealing with bodies instead of stunning them, that is what our level sixes are for. Not only that, our level sixes facilitate a high amount of value by just being able to play tamers or get extra attacks in and of themselves. So I am playing two copies of the BT11 Old Force Vidramon, allowing us to play more tamers whenever we evolve into this, allowing us to play tamers. This card is really fantastic and does everything that we want the deck to do. Uh, not only that, but 
its bounce effect is increased by the number of tamers that you have. So if you have three tamers in play, bouncing level sixes isn't hard. And with its windage evolving effect, getting three tamers in play isn't really that difficult in this deck. So for the last level six, I am playing a single copy of Old Force X. Uh, this card combos really well, again, with the Old Force Vidramon, um, letting you unsuspend, letting you do a bunch of extra attacks, letting you uh, bounce more cards. This is one of those... These are slots that are highly flexible, but I really, really like the Old Force package for this because it's really the only level 6 slot that you could include that not only deals with threats, but also plays Tamers. So this card can kind of help you mitigate the high play cost of cards like Sora Joe, like Davis, and I really, really like the value that these cards add to the deck. So closing it out, we do have the options. We do play three copies of Sorai because this card is busted. Uh, again, with the Tommy, with the Sorai, you have a bunch of things that can stop your opponent from just doing anything whenever they swing into security. This card is really good against Fenrir. It's really good against Bloomlord. It's really good against Jess. Um, it's just fantastic against any deck that needs their sources. Again, um, which is something that this deck really, really excels into. Uh, not only that, but it shuts down Shine Greymon, which is an, definitely an added benefit this format. We have the single copy of Ice Wall, because this card is kind of made for this deck, <laughs> in all honesty. This card just feels super uh, br broken and oppressive when you can already stun most things. This card further limits your opponent's options, and that's always good. And then for the last two cards, we have two copies of Mental Training. Uh, this searches everything in the deck, and it can allow us to go into cards like Vidramon and All Force Vidramon for pretty cheap. Um, it's a free Kakumon. This makes Blast Ace, or the, the Zudomon play, um, even cheaper if you're trying to go for it for your turn. Um, I really like Mental Training. I just don't think this deck needs it as much as other decks do, because it's already so efficient in what it does. Um, and you aren't evolving on top of Digimon, as often as other decks like this deck or the trainings don't activate if you're going to evolve a, a tamer into a hybrid you can't use a training for that uh which is part of the reason that i felt like two was kind of a comfortable number to include so yeah that is it for the card choices this is definitely a deck that is highly flexible there are a lot of things that you could choose to include in this so let me know what you guys are choosing to include down in the comments below and we will see you all in the next video bye everyone